So yesterday I started a new project, which I don't know if I'll, I'm gonna climb a ladder while filming, see if this works. But the metal siding on my house where it meets the roof, um, the previous owners um, didn't get a chance to finish before I came in. So let me see if you, I don't know if you can hear me now, but this is my attic. You see those big gaps all along there? I've started adding wood blocking and using some Tyvek tape to close up the gap. So I, I put a, a little bit of Tyvek tape to close up the gap. Then I put some two by four blocking in. I've pre-drilled some metal holes so I can then go to the outside and I'll show you pictures of what that looks like. To, um, you know, screw the uh, sheet metal into these two by four backers that I put up there. And then I'm going to come back and insulate it. So working up in this space, it might seem large, but it tapers as you go towards the back. It's only about a foot high back there. So I started that last night and it sort of kicked my ass. I need to keep doing it, especially before it gets too cold, because they say, I'm not an insulation expert, but they say that airflow will kill your, you know, insulating properties more so than a lack of actual insulation. So you got to find those gaps and crevices in this house all along the roof, all the way around has, you know, gaps that are half inch, in some cases, nearly an inch in size. Now that's okay when you're not occupying the structure. I'm not occupying this yet, but I'm gonna spend, you know, it's winter now. It's almost the, sun, the winter solstice. It's December, what, 19th, somewhere in there, 18th, 19th today. And it's gonna start getting cold here in, in Bisbee and I wanna work in here and I don't want it to be freezing cold inside. So that's one of my tasks, um, new projects. Not very glamorous, I'm not sure if it's worth YouTubing. But I started that yesterday, but I'm not feeling it today. I don't want to go up and down the ladder. And I've also, I've kind of hurt my right eye again. I seem to easily scratch my cornea. And it's, so it's kind of inflamed and a little sensitive to the light. And the idea of going up there and doing that, it's just not super appealing. So I'm going to switch gears today and I'm going to work on my solar array um, rack for my solar arrays. So I've shown you in a previous video, I've got these 10 foot four by fours and I've created this channel in it, um, which is going to be on its side like this. Whoops, here's my chisel. The solar panels are going to fit in that groove, but um, the solar panel, the rack itself is going to be a static angle. So I've done some research online and for this part of Southern Arizona, almost to Mexico, I'm only two miles, three miles, I can see Mexico from my house. Um, 27.5 degrees is the best angle if you're not gonna be able to tilt your panels. So my plan is to build a big heavy rack because I do have cow and deer. I don't want them to nudge or move my solar panels, right? I'm gonna do a big massive wooden rack, three panels per rack, and I gotta do four of them. And this first one is my prototype. And I'm gonna set the angle at 27.5. And I've done the math and used an online, you know, triangle calculator to figure out the length of my legs. So my south facing leg will be shorter, the north side leg will be taller. And I've done the math to figure out they've gotta be 30 inches in height difference. I think I'm going to go with a 10 foot four by four as the um, leg to, you know, to, to use as the starting point for my legs and then cut two legs, one long and one short from each 10 footer. And so that takes me up to the, on the short side, it would be 45 inches high and then 75 inches high on the back side. I think that's right. So that's what I'm going to work on today. So I'm going to get going on, on building out the solar panel array and we'll see how it goes. I'll take you on the journey, take pictures and see how this prototype comes out. All right, guys, well, I'm not always the sharpest tool in the shed. I was going to all this trouble to use my speed square and to figure out my angle here to get a 27 and a half uh, degree cut. I started marking on the wood there of the angle. And then I realized, oh, well, with this new miter saw, <laughs> all I got to do is turn it 
find my 27.5 degree angle right there. And the plan is, I don't know if you can see that shadow down there. I've just got to bisect my cut line. I, I made a mark at 45 from one end, 75 from the other. Um, and I just got to make sure that my cut line bisects that right in the center of the four by four. Okay, I've just cut two of my two four by fours, the 10 footers, and here's the result. Sorry about the brightness. See this angle of 27 and a half degrees right here, sloping up. Here's my two back legs. So there, if I back up, you can see there's the basic frame of my entire rack. And because these are at 27 and a half degrees, if I just take my big channel four by fours that the solar panel is going to sit in and rest them on top here, they will also be at 27 and a half degrees. Same thing along the top there. I'll just rest one across the top and then theoretically my solar panels will slide right in. So I'm going to uh, use clamps and sort of mock that up right now and see if it actually works. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, literally. I just gouged the shit out of my thumb. Pardon my language. Lost about a quart of blood, but I'm back in action. I got them in here, three panels. Let's see how they fit in the ends. Walk over here. Now, hopefully you can see how this groove works. That just slides right into the channel here. And up here at the top side, same idea. Slides into a channel, and once it fits, I can then just slide three in there. Now I've got all this temporary bracing with clamps, two by fours, one screwed into the bottom because when I was loading the first panel, the whole thing shifted and the panel fell, almost broke, almost killed myself. So I decided that would be my safety net. Got to watch out for clamps sticking out, trying to get me some cross bracing here. Sorry about the lighting. As usual, cross bracing here. So you get the basic idea. I think that's up high enough off the ground that the cows theoretically, you know, they could bump it. But that's, that's taller than most of the cows around here, especially the calves. The adults, maybe their horns might come up that high on the, the bulls. But, you know, now I've got to figure out, since I have the basic geometry and I, you know, know my distances, how am I going to do this square enough and strong enough outside to do, you know, over and over again using a minimum amount of wood, etc. So now I just got to think through where my bracing is going to be, how much of it, you know, how to make the design just a little bit more efficient and better overall. But I'm happy this worked with all the four by fours and the two by fours and the panels. This thing probably weighs 400 pounds. Hopefully that's enough to keep it on the ground when there's a windstorm because we get some pretty fierce winds out here. Um, I guess I could put some uh, sandbags over the, the bottom rail, etc. And, um, you know, but it's got to be light enough. My goal is, depending on the season, to prop up either the back side of it a foot or the front part of it a foot to flatten it out in the summer to kind of adjust. I also thought about doing adjustable legs or extensions off of the legs with bolts, like carriage bolts through it. So I actually just have an adjustable lower half of the leg that I could slide up or down on all four legs to get my tilt, you know, and just do that a couple times a year, um, but without it getting too heavy. So that's my challenge. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going. I hope you like my prototype. If you have suggestions or comments, of course, please leave them below and I may incorporate them because I need all the help I can get. Um, I think I have a plan now. So, since this is my prototype solar rack, it, I need to do three more of them and possibly five more after that for the main array that will be for this house. Um, the four of these that I'm going to make are actually for my tiny house. So it needs to be a repeatable process and I need to be able to do it, you know, alone and have it be um, just repeatable, right? Consistent measurements, consistent cuts, a consistent lumber list. So what I'm basically going to do is make a frame for the outside at this, you know, sidewall, I guess you would say, for both ends, both sides, 
and then make a little two by six frame uh, that would go around the four feet. And by just laying those frames on the ground and standing up my sidewalls, that would basically create an outer frame that would then allow me to take my four by four posts and know exactly where they go, when exactly they're plumb, etc., and give me some rigidity. And I can assemble those side frames and you know alone, basically. And so that's my next step, is basically to make one frame that would help me define the entire shape of this thing and then um, set it up. And then, you know, once I've proven that it works, then just basically lather, rinse, and repeat. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, in order to make my frame, I've got to rip some lumber. Uh, fortunately, I bought some of this cull lumber from Home Depot for 70% off, purple tag, whatever you want to call it. I had no specific use for it, but like here's a two by 12, I've got a couple of those. And I don't really use two by 12s, that's some pretty heavy duty wood. So I'm gonna rip this into two two by sixes and use that for my frame. So I've got some work to do to set up my saw horses and my you know saw guide and rip some lumber, but that's the next step. Okay, one of the pieces I just ripped is gonna be this bottom piece of the frame. The other one I just ripped is going to be this top piece of the frame, which runs long. So I've clamped it up in place and I've just drawn a pencil mark on this side so it'll be flush. And now I'm just gonna chop off the end of it. And then there's my top and bottom of the frame. Then I need two verticals and basically I have a side piece. Okay, this thing is essentially done, but I've been too lazy to take it outside and rebuild it. I've built side frames that um, can be unscrewed from the main you know, vertical support of the legs. And I've got one of those on each side. And then I've got two railing systems or base systems, I guess you could say down here, that will also unscrew. I can take it outside as you know, each, this whole front assembly is one piece, this whole back section, over here um, along the, the floor there is another piece. So I can take essentially this one section, two, three, and four, go outside to where this thing is going to live. I can put those on the ground. I can stand up the side sections, do a little truing up and tacking things in place. And then because I have these braces in here, it tells me exactly where my legs have to go, right? So I can't get that wrong. It's defined on the corners and it's defined in the center section. So then I can just stand up my vertical supports and then I can attach these uh, cross, whoa, attach these cross members, get the panels in there, do some fine tuning, and then, you know, anchor these down permanently uh, with long deck screws and maybe some little um, Simpson strong tie type fittings or whatever you call those, ties. And then as I said earlier in the video, I can use sandbags or, or something else uh, to weight this whole thing down if need be. The nice thing about it is the top of these panels are up here at about six and a half feet. So I can get to the wiring to connect all these up very easily, which is really nice. If winds start to become a problem, I could always take strips of plywood or OSB, you know, 12 inch wide, 24 inches wide, and bring them and put them across the back here, and that would cause wind to deflect above and below them. If I need to put some, you know, plywood across the front there to kind of force the wind down and through and so that it can't get any lift, that would probably work pretty well too. And then the next idea I came up with to make me build this faster and easier is instead of putting the channel in this four by four with you know, a circular saw and a chisel, which is very time consuming and tedious, I realized I could just use two by fours like this set here and build them up in an offset way. I don't know if you can see this. Build them up in an offset way like that to create a channel on this side that it would drop into. And so that would be just easier to work with. And I could do in five minutes, create one of these, whereas it took probably two or three hours to put the channel in the other ones. And I've, all, I've also got some other ideas about how to do the build more safely uh, by putting the two by fours in and putting some cross members there. I can just sit the solar panels in there 
um, and then build up, as I said, build up with the two by fours to make channels instead of making channels and then having to lift a heavy solar panel and slide it into a groove. I'd rather just build the groove around a solar panel that's just resting on the whole frame. So I'm going to, I'm not sure when I'm going to disassemble this, but I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to put, you know, get it all rebuilt. I'll film that, but I'll probably call that part two and then show you how the build of the next one goes because I'm trying to share with you some ideas that if you have to build a ground mount solar array and you don't want to mess around with rails and aluminum and aluminum rails and nuts and screws and hardware to clamp it all down, you know, that's, that's, if that's appealing to you, hopefully the, the videos will help you out. One last thing is I have to make a decision about water. Uh, oh, I did drill some weep holes in this. I can't show them to you while the panels are in. But water, you know, when it rains, is going to come right down here and catch in this groove. And it's got to go somewhere. So underneath this groove or, or from the bottom of this groove, I've drilled some weep holes so the water can actually just flow straight out and doesn't just, you know, build up in this four by four. And I'll do something similar on the next one. But since I will be um, getting a lot of water on this when it rains, I have to decide if I should, you know, pull these panels apart. And, and, you know, build in a one inch gap here for water to help drain through, or should I butt them all up tight against one another, put this whole thing on an ever so slight tilt, and then, you know, hang a bucket off the end or put a, a rain barrel under one end of this and actually use it as a bit of a rainwater collection system. Yeah, it would require a lot of, you know, manual labor and pouring buckets into a bigger tank or an IBC tote, but I like the idea of just using every possible square foot to capture water, especially once I have more cisterns that can hold more water for long-term storage. So just a couple of thoughts that are floating around in my head, uh, but let's wrap this one up. Um, thanks for watching part one. Uh, leave your comments. Make sure you like, subscribe if you're not already. Turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you in part two. Have a great new year. Bye-bye.